Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Thermalright Frozen Edge 360 into this case. This is a pretty straightforward thing to do. This is on a AM5 platform, AM5 and AM4, exactly the same procedure. So if you want to find out how to install it, keep watching. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to do the installation of the Thermalright Frozen Edge 360 in black. Now, this is going to be for the AM5 models. So this is going to be also relevant to AM4 as well. The first thing you want to do is to look at your motherboard. Obviously, we've got our CPU installed here. And we want to remove the two plastic brackets, which come pre-attached on the motherboard, and remove the four screws. So let's go ahead and do that first. And just put those somewhere for safekeeping. Next, you'll be needing the AMD parts bag. Inside the parts bag, you're going to have the four pinky colored standoffs. So we put one of those over the top of each one of the protrusions. If you're using AM4, you can line this up with the stock AMD backplate. Next, we're going to need the two semicircle or slightly rounded brackets. Now they go one on each end and you go with the kind of the bracket or the the actual curve facing in towards the CPU. So it should look a little something like that. Just try and get the holes lined up with the brackets. This is considerably easier to do with the system led down, otherwise the brackets will tend to fall off. Next, we'll be needing the four screws, which are also in the AMD bag, and literally just put those in through the bracket and tighten those all the way down until you reach a hard stop. If you wish, you can do these just hand tight until you feel the stop at the very bottom. If you want to, you can at the end just grab a screwdriver and just give it a little bit more torquing down just to make sure that it's firmly attached. So that's it for the actual brackets for the motherboard. The next thing to do is to actually physically install the radiator into the computer chassis. And then finally, at the end, we can attach the pump head and do the associated wiring. So at this point, you have to make a decision how you actually want the, uh, the tube. So the default configuration out of the box is with the fans attached like this, with the cables for the fans coming out of the backside. So this would mean that the tube would be coming from this side and then wrapping round that way there. If you've got the room, that's probably the way to do it. Alternately, if you want to, you can actually remove the fans, turn them around the other way, and then do it this way. And then you can do a kind of coil situation with the pump head there. Just have a think about it before you actually install it. Obviously, if you want to, you can always take it off after and start again. So just decide which way around you're gonna do it for now. I think I might actually do it the coil way, but we'll try it the other way around anyway, just to see how it looks to begin with. A quick deviation from the main video. So at this point when we're actually installing the radiator, it is actually also important to note that the pump head where it says thermal rights isn't actually removable or rotatable. So do bear that in mind, depending on how you want your tubes to look. As you'll see from the video we've gone through and later on in the video, I actually changed the orientation. So the tubes were originally coming out of this side, but it just didn't look right and I couldn't get it to fit nicely and also have the thermal right logo in the right position. So if the logo is important to you, then obviously stop now and you wanna reverse it and just put the radiator in around the other way. You will need to remove the fans and just have the wires come out of the back. You can leave them at the front, but it looks really ugly. I would suggest taking them off and starting over on that particular side of things. Anyway, back to the video. So in order to attach the radiator, you'll notice you've got these holes at the top here. So all you want to do is to line up your radiator into the chassis and get it just approximately in place. Just hold it in place and then you can attach the screws into the top. We'll show you that next. So for this section, you'll require this little bag here, which has got the screws to hold the radiator into the case. So I've put the case side down now, just so you can see this a little bit easier. So what I generally tend to do is put the radiator in place, just approximately, and just put one screw in each of the opposing corners just to get you started. And that way you can still move it around a little bit in your case. Your particular case may have a little bit more adjustment, but if you do the screws up lightly, 
you can just about get them into the right place and make sure that all the holes line up with the appropriate fixing points. When you're happy it's in a decent position then you can go ahead and put in all the rest of the screws and tighten them all right down. Now is probably a good time to uncoil the wires that are coming from the three fans or two fans if you've got the 240 mil version and just take the PWM wires and tuck them through the holes up at the top of the back of your case. So you should see various holes along the top of your chassis. Just pass them through, it doesn't really make a difference where you put it through. The cables are actually quite long anyway. So yeah, just do whatever you need to do for your particular style of case. So for this particular setup, I've got one cable coming through here for this fan, one cable coming through here for the middle fan, and for the end one, we've got this one coming through. Now, depending on how you want to do it, there is a little hub. This is probably the easiest way of doing it. Now, there is actually one port on the hub, which is marked up as white. That is the fan speed sensing port. It doesn't really matter which one you put on there because they're all going to be running the same speed anyway. But just make sure that all three fans are plugged into this. And then we've got a single PWM cable, which will then plug in to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And when we're done, it should look a little something like this. So there are our wires going into the hub, leaving us our single PWM connection to plug into the motherboard. And with this, there isn't any sticky pads or anything included. If you want to, you could always stick one somewhere on the back of your chassis, somewhere convenient, just to attach it. That choice is entirely up to you. So we're gonna take our CPU fan header plug, and I'm just gonna pass it back through into the front side of the board. Just pass it through one of the top holes, it should be fine. You can just leave it loose for now, and then we can do some cable management later if necessary. If you start cable managing now and cable tying things down, you may find it difficult when you come to actually plug in the connector. Again, the choice is entirely up to you. So from the other side now, if we grab our cable, which we've just passed through, and attach it to our CPU fan header. Now on this particular motherboard, it is in this location here. Depending on your motherboard, you might wanna check your manual or just look at the silk screen printings on the board to make sure it says CPU fan header. Once the plug's attached, you can then pass through any additional cabling back through to the back of your PC to keep things neat. Next, we're gonna attach the pump head. First of all, make sure you peel off the plastic protection from the bottom of the cold plate. With this particular setup, it's nice and easy. The pins are there and there, so top and bottom. So you could either go around this way, the logo would be upside down on the pump now, or you can turn it around this way. Again, do it whichever way suits you. Just make sure the screws line up. Okay, so some of you will have noticed I've uh, changed the orientation. So we've now got the tubes coming out of the left-hand side rather than the right-hand side for one reason, and that is the fact that I couldn't get it to line up nicely and also have the thermal right logo in the right position. Unfortunately, it would appear that this isn't a cap. I was hoping that you could take the cap off to rotate that should you need to. And it's a shame that they've actually put the thermal right lettering on there. Otherwise, you could turn it upside down and it would be absolutely fine. The logo look absolutely great either way up but unfortunately if you've got the text like that and you turn it upside down it does look a little bit awful although this does help because actually the wiring coming out of the side of the pump will run nicely up the side of our ram here so yeah that's the way i want it so make sure you apply some thermal paste i've done a pretty messy job there but it should be absolutely fine so what you want to do is to line up the screws or the threads which are actually on the brackets there with the two screws we've got on actually on the pump so you can do it whichever way around you want so if you line up maybe the top one first and then just get it in place for the bottom one again this sort of thing is much much easier to do with the system led down but uh, for me in this instance i'm just going to do it this way round so when you get the thread started just do some equal turns so one two three or so it's very difficult for me to see from this angle but just keep on tightening until you get to the point of a hard stop. That's pretty much it. And there we go. So that is fully tightened up. So that's fine. Then you can readjust the, uh, the tubes however you see fit, just so they hang nicely in your system. 
The next part is going to be the wiring. So for the wiring, I would suggest just trying to choose a route. If you want to, you can actually use the included cable clips and actually run this cable along with the tubes and then back up through out the back. Uh, depending on how you want to do it, there should be enough length there to connect to wherever it needs to go. On this particular motherboard, our address port RGB is over here. And the pump header is just at the top, which might just be slightly out of shot there. So what I'm going to do, I think, is connect up those first, and then I'm going to take the wire after and then pass it through the top. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's our addressable RGB. And the pump header is just above the CPU on this one. I'll lean the PC down a little bit just so you can see where those go. So there's the pump header at the top there and the ARGB there. So now what I'm going to do is just pass this up through the top and pull through any excess cable. So you just pull the cable through from behind. And then you can minimize how much cable is on show. The extra pass through for the RGB, we can take that through the top as well. So we don't need that. And yeah, that's absolutely fine. So that is it, that is it completely installed. And yeah, I think that looks uh, pretty nice. Nice job. We need to stick our RAM back in. So we're going to go off and do some testing now. So if you want to see the thermal results for this particular setup, uh, head over to the review video. That will be linked in the video description. But for those of you that are watching to see how this is installed, then that is pretty much it. So there you go. That is how to install the Thermalright Frozen Edge 360 onto an AM4 or AM5 platform. As you've probably guessed, it wasn't exactly smooth sailing. Unfortunately, we did have to do a little bit of uh, rotation of the radiator to get things to go nicely. I really wish the Thermalright had the wisdom to make this a removable cap on top of the pump head, just so the logo is up the right way, especially depending on which side your tubes are coming out. Obviously, that is a very minor thing, and realistically, most people probably won't care less. But for those who do care about aesthetics, then uh, yeah, I think it would have been nice to have that, or potentially just some way of blanking off so you can't see the logo. So anyway, I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. Hopefully the video's been useful. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and then don't forget to hit the chime notification and choose all notifications. That way you'll be notified of all future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.